Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of On Air with Owen. Excited about this one um, because we've got something I've not talked about before on any of my 40, 50 pods so far. Um, we're talking about a, a genuine sales conversion rate of 98%. Wait for it, you heard it right, 98%. We've got the, the lady on herself who makes this claim and we're going to dig into it and see what we can unearth. Um, Kate bradley Chernis is the CEO of Lately, and she joins us today for a conversation about that and many other things to do with rev revenue growth and sales. Kate, firstly, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Don't call me a lady, Owen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You it's great, great like. to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I am super excited to have you on. Um, Sometimes with guests, I struggle to find a topic that they're really passionate about. Um, yours is right up there. So absolutely love love the fact that you've put that out there. And we are going to dive into that in a moment um, and talk about that first, though, because some of our audience will know you, many won't. Could you give us just two minutes? Who's Kate? Who's Lately? Just give us a better understanding of you. Yeah, sure. So uh, I used to be a rock and roll DJ and my last gig was broadcasting to 20 million listeners a day for XM Satellite Radio. And what I learned about the neuroscience of music actually plays into the AI of Lately, which is the company I own now. And oh, by the way, I also used to own a marketing agency and my first client was Walmart. And I ended up getting them 130% ROI year over year for three years. So that also plays into Lately. Uh, so Lately is an artificial intelligent powered software that writes social selling content for you. Right, so we learn what words, key phrases, and sentence structures your customers would like to read, watch, or hear. And when you feed us long-form content, like this pod, for example, we'll look for that writing model that we created, slice up all the fine quotes that you say or that I say, and the video clips to go with, and then give you social posts wrapped in a bow. Amazing, <laughs> amazing, good. Fantastic. Great start. We know what you do. We know who you are. Jeez, there's some CV, I have to say. Incredible. <laughs> I'll dig into those. I want to talk about the Walmart story as well a bit more, but but I can't I can't take this conversation any further without just tabling what you put when I put a social post on saying, let anyone know any great speakers and you put, I'll come on and tell you about my 98% sales conversion. And I thought, Okay, you're coming on without a doubt. So here you <laughs> are today, ready to talk about it. I know nothing when I tell the audience this right now. I know nothing more than that. That is it. That's all I know. And I've purposely not asked Kate for the context until now. Kate, all right. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all true. So, you know, because I have the marketing background and because my my Uber skill, Owen, is turning listeners into fans or customers into evangelists. There's a big different there, difference, right? I believe in the long tail. I believe that the hard way is, is the way because the power that you get back, right, is so, is so much exponentially more deeper, valuable, yada, yada, yada. And so at Lately, for example, we don't do any paid ads, no cold calls and no cold emails because we hate being on the receiving end of that stuff. We hate it, right? There isn't a call that comes through. If I don't know you, I'm you know, block, 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 that's just me, right? And we decided that early on, because I know the value of that, that long tail, we had to put a lot of effort into marketing as a small company, which most companies don't, right? They think it's an afterthought. And they have this crazy, thanks to the stupid movie, like if we build it, they will come. It's not true, right? You really have to cultivate your, your network. And so knowing that we, we already had that in place, and then we actually just didn't raise enough money to be able to do paid properly. And so what is the phrase mother of invention or something like that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we only use lately for all of our marketing and the AI is so good at literally knowing what our customers want to read, watch and hear. And so I'm just going to describe the process, um, not as a commercial, but like this is actually what I did manually for, for Walmart so you guys can understand. So when you give Lately access to your social channels, it literally studies everything you've ever published for the last year. And it looks for the keywords, phrases, and sentence structures and builds a writing model based on what we know gets you the most engagement. And then you feed it long form content and it breaks it down like we talked about before. So we, I'm gonna ask you for this file 
right? I'm not doing this for fun. I This is my lead gen. I do one of these every day, right? And we're going to run it through lately. It's going to atomize it. And then my, my marketing team is going to augment the voice because humans plus AI is how it works. AI on its own, cold robot, humans on their own, we're slow. Together, there's the kaboom, right? And so they augment that with a series of writing rules that we can talk about some best practices for, for social selling teams, if you want. And then we publish not only on our brand channels, but also our employee channels because we're all in it together, right? And as a small company, especially, we need all the help we can get, all the voices we can get. And then we actually watch who likes and comments and shares. I got this idea from, from Gary Vaynerchuk um, who advised me on this way because I was like, you know, why, why, you know, cold just is so cold. And he's like, well, you already have warm leads. People who are connecting with you already know you. So let's light them up, right? Mm -hmm. So we watch those likes, comments, and shares, and then we push them into the sale. So by the time they get to us, we have that 98% sales conversion. By the way, sometimes it's higher because there's flow over from, from scheduling and, and um, free trials and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, but it's because they're hot. They're hot leads by the time I get them, right? And, and it's two reasons. Number one, because my my team, we walk the walk. We, talk, we walk the talk, right? Everybody's social. I only hire social sellers. Because what's the point? If you, I mean, if that's not a tool that you have, you can't properly exist in business, right? And then, of course, the product sells itself because everybody goes, holy jal hot jalapeno peppers. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> love it. Love it. So... so Ironically, we're, we're talking about a 98% conversion. Let's just leave it at 98. I understand there's going to be some skew month to month, week to week, all that kind of stuff, which anybody listening to this, I would hope would be smart enough to realize. <laughs> um, but let's call it 98%. There's 98% there. You spoke about your marketing and you talked about the product more than you spoke about sales. Yet when you put it in the first instance, it was a sales conversion rate. So when you attribute that in your mind, and I'm, whether you've thought about it this way or not, I don't know. How much of it is down to the quality of marketing and the message that you're putting out there and the fact that, you, like you say, they're red hot by the time you get there? How much of it is down to the product being great? And how much of it is down to the sales process, sales skills of the individual person involved in that? Yeah, so I'm going to say, and I hope my engineers don't get mad at me, but it, the product is actually the least mm. because, um, you know, we've we're we've been doing this for a long time and we've we have bugs, we have all kinds of problems. Like the product doesn't always delight, you know, right? We're a small company. And all of you know that there's plenty of things we've all bought out there that are crappy, but the marketing was so good, you got sucked in, right? Yeah. Um, and I almost named something and then I <laughs> myself because they might invest in me. So recording. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I think of sales and marketing as, as the same thing. This is a, sort of a unique idea. Um, I don't separate them. That's why all of my salespeople are on social actively. Um, my marketing like specific person actually is involved in the selling. Um, my Slack channels all bleed into each other. I don't separate people. I mean, we're small enough to still do this, but I hate repeating myself. I hate it. And, you know, if it's right there, why should I? And I find that, you know, whether it's engineering or sales or marketing or customer service, everybody's selling. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is everybody has to have the same message. Yeah. Right. So when we're all on brand like that, when we all understand how Lately works, what the values are, what customer problems are, why sales, you know, can't get to this certain um, category or whatever it is, everybody chimes in with the same ideas or, or different ideas or helpful ideas, whatever. Um, so again, like I said, we all walk the talk, we all walk the walk, and the we're able to move more quickly, readjust constantly with that that mindset, because as we touched on before, you know, the old ways, they're kind of smelly at this point. They're, they're stale, right? And, and part of that old way is, I know it's cliche, but it's the constant silo. I mean, I, so, so Owen, I was also a line cook all through high school and college. And there was this constant war between the kitchen and the, and the wait staff. I was, I was in the back, right? You know, and this one restaurant I worked at once a year on a lunch shift, like in the summer when it's kind of dead, they would flip us. So the wait staff had to go to the kitchen and the kitchen had to go out front and boy, did it suck. <laughs> imagine <laughs> right but it's that now this is again very much about you know sales um of course across the board is that 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 sympathy 
that you gain from putting yourself in someone else's shoes, you know, nothing beats that. Yeah. Right. That's a really, really good point. And, and, and I think there's a couple of key points I want to put out there. One is the fact that you talk about sales and marketing in the same breath as being one. And it's a valid point. There are a lot of companies who still see that working in silos and they're not moving forward into the world of revenue over sales and or marketing. Um, so I think that's a fantastic point. And then the other is around everybody jumping across to help that learning process and hearing that more and more. I think it's one of those things that could be easily held off, held off, held off. We don't want to do it because it feels like it's a bit of disjointed. It feels like it's uh, forcing people to do what they don't want to do. But actually the learnings and, and use of sympathy, empathy, all those sorts of things that can come from that would be hugely invaluable. I want to step back in, though. I'm not going to let you get away with this. I want to get back in. <laughs> so, so we're talking about, let's just be clear on this. We're talking about leads that come into your business that make contact with you because they've seen your marketing. They've seen your content, usually social content. They've seen the messaging. We're then picking up the phone or they're sending a note into you or making a demo request or free trial or whatever it might be. So they're getting to you off their own back, having seen content from you probably consistently over a period of time. Uh, is my assumption right so far? Yeah. And let's let's dial in on the content, actually. Yeah. Mind? OK, yeah. because I think this is where you're going. So what are we writing <laughs> yeah. is, is the thing. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys I'll try not to. There's so many places I can go here, but number one, writing social content specifically, you only have two objectives. There's only two. It's share or click, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can back into what you write based on that. Now, as a small company or as an individual, it's very difficult to get people to click because yeah. a lot of trust is required there. There's one exception. That's how-to content. Everybody clicks how-to content because it's built in how-to, the curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. But if you uh, have share as your objective, okay, now I have to write something that's around ego. People share what makes them look good. Super mm -hmm. easy. Just like in college when somebody, you know, played you a record and then and you were like, m your mind was blown and then you pass it on to friends. Guess what? You are the cool one who has yeah. the taste maker, right? So if you're thinking that way, like, okay, I'm going to, I have to write for the share and you can go a bunch of ways, um, offensive, funny, <laughs> Um, or sentimental, right? Those are really the three ways to, to get the shares. Information, less so. It's boring. Mm. It just is, yeah. right? Now, you can sandwich it inside those other three things or, um, you know, play on that curiosity like we talked there. So here's one practical way. Who, what, where, how, why, when, right? Those are the questions we all know. Mm. Uh, why is my favorite because why is always followed by because. Mm -hmm. Always. So if you pose the question why and it hasn't been resolved yet, you're making the reader want the, re want the resolution, want to click to mm -hmm. find it, right? Now, the word because alone, there's been all these tests proven that if you use the word in, it, obviously in an appropriate sentence, in an email, you got a 20% higher uh, response rate. And the reason is because, because, because it resolves, it, there's a reason that it's talking about and it, it, um, it impels trust. It, 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 it pushes you as an authority because you have an answer. You're giving the answer. Right? Mm. Um, so some other, um, here's another trick that we've learned that gets people to share our content. So hashtags, um, not what they used to be. <laughs> So if you're pushing a string of hashtags on the end of your content, you just look lazy. You look like you're desperate. You're trying to glom on to some kind of mm -hmm. hot topic that's not really, it's too big for you, really, right? Um, and instead, if you use inline hashtags, you get a couple of more bonus points because if you think of them more as context, so contextualizing and augmenting mm -hmm. what you're saying in that short uh, area, and then the second bonus is you get a visual inside, in line, right? All the blue is not at the end. It's in the middle. So it can, you can highlight and accent the words that you want emphasis on. Mm, I like that. I like that. I never thought about it that way. That's why you do what you do, right? That's a good. That's right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and this is like, we're, this is nuts and bolts, right? So we're just yeah. talking about like, um, so, so I give this course actually, Owen, called um, The Writing Rules You Wish You Had in College. Yeah. And it's about 11 kind of practical things like this that that like like I said before so the AI actually learns from me first I was a fiction mm -hmm. writing major I wrote thousands of commercials for radio and the rules uh, that I am talking about here I use my own organic so it studies me as the best practice baseline and then it studies my team and then it studies you so there's like a constant step mm -hmm. ladder of 
writing, copywriting best practices built in. Love it. Love it. So, so, so we, we're going to go back to 98%. So we've got some <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not going to, I'm not going anywhere until I know this. Please. So <laughs> around how these people get to you. So you're, you're, you're practicing what you preach, and that's fantastic. People get in touch with you. They're doing one of those three, four things that we talked about before. Do they get a human conversation? Is it an automated sales process? Is it a, a trial? What happens next? Yeah, we're, so we're about to flip it, <laughs> which yeah. might be crazy. Uh, be to see what happens to you, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so literally, like, so so Katie watches who likes, comments, and shares, and then she starts a conversation with them. She might just say, hey, waving, hi, Owen, nice to meet you, Sally, whatever. Just like something super innocuous, not pushy yeah. at all. And we might do that repeatedly. Like my sales team might give her a list of 20 people that they're trying to get on the radar and she'll just mm -hmm. follow and retweet and reshare their content. This is the mm -hmm. give, right? You got to give to get. Um, and then, you know, once we have that conversation, it's, it's kind of like we, we lead with, with the, the interesting things. You know, there's a reason I say I'm a rock and roll DJ broadcasting to 20 million listeners. I don't even have to tell you about lately. And you're just mm -hmm. like, who the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so we have a lot of that kind of panache or, or um, character on the team. And so they know yeah. to do that as well. Um, excuse me. Once we get you into that <coughs> DM, it is a demo. The demo sells itself because we have effed it up 50 ways to, you know, New York and back a million times over. Believe me, because I, I don't really hire salespeople. I just hire regular people. Yeah. My customer service was out person was out selling every sales gun I hired four to one. And I was like, okay, well, let's just what is she doing? Oh, she's yeah. just being interesting and nice. She's listening. Mm. Mm. Right. So that's a big part of it. Um, you know, the other thing, well, so let's go to the flip. What we're doing now is we are creating a self-service path. And we're putting all the human, the stuff, for, this character uh, inside the product, mm. which we haven't been able to do before because this is getting into the weeds a little bit. We were, we've, we have quite a robust platform for enterprise and mm. we're relaunching three products that are for individuals um, and we've stripped them way down so that we're able to simplify the process and, and, um, and do the self-service. Now, the learnings come from, you know, years of customer feedback um for us i'm the voice right Kately, you know mm. my, my team calls me lately and so our challenge right now is putting kate Kately, <laughs> you know inside the product so the like the rules we've just talking about i've been spending i got like 800 of them that i'm writing in a spreadsheet right now for the tech team to like yeah. pop in you know constantly yes. like that kind of idea yeah so what we're saying is that we've got people coming in talking to a human, not a sales rep. So a normal human being, normal mm -hmm. being, being rock star, whatever you want to call it, love that. Um, and then 98% are going through to what? Uh, from the demo, they go right into, usually they go right into a sale. Actually, they don't even bother with a free Basically. trial. Yeah, okay. that's about 50% of the time, I would say. Um, yeah. we, we found that a seven day trial works for us. We've tried all mm -hmm. the times of trials, yeah. um, but seven is, is enough. And the reason is because people, 30 days, they forget about it and they don't use mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Seven is enough to to test the waters or for us to, to see if they haven't been in there at all. Like they're going to mm -hmm. you know, get away from us. Um, and then we are terrible. We don't have drip feed emails. Like we tried all this stuff. and We were bad at it or we're too small mm -hmm. to have enough um, bandwidth to execute that stuff well. Yeah. So we found that two um, onboarding sessions is the key indicator to prevent well, churn with yeah. the human. Remember we talked about in the beginning, Owen, the hard way is the way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're talking about two two physical conversations with people during that seven day trial that just interesting the seven day piece because it makes people it forces people to use it. Right. It creates an urgency. And then if you've yeah. got a commitment to two two conversations during that time as well, I can see why that just moves things up a level for, for them and means that if you're you're almost encouraging them to qualify themselves out, if you're not going to try it in the next seven days and you're prepared to commit to these two calls. You move yeah. On. And people are allergic to that, right? They don't mm. want to talk to you. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see. So, so we've actually, we, we turn away 70% of the leads that come to us. 
right. which is insane yeah. because like I said, we have this enterprise product and we didn't have a product for these people. So this is mm. what we've done. We've now built one. So it'll be so interesting to see, you know, th these are more consumer types, yeah. um, you, you know, so, so again, like to your point, we know we have to have a seven day trial for them, for anybody. We, we, mm. still, we know we have that price pairing. We know that we have to have them enter a credit card, which pisses a million people off, but that, yeah. um, as you said, like sifts, sifts the pain in the asses out, yeah. right? Um, and then this is what's gonna be remain to, to be seen. Like, you know, do we still have to have these human touch points? We're betting on no because we stripped the product out and simplified mm. it so much. Now we'll have videos and help centers and all those kinds of things that, you know, we, we can actually do. Um, but this is crazy. Like, I mean, I'm, I, uh, so, so in order to make this switch, by the way, like we had to let go of our sales team mm. <laughs> for the most part, like I kept one <laughs> and it's not so he can handle like enterprise or, or that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I feel a little bit bad about that, but. <laughs> making business decisions right and that, that that's right. there's winners and losers in that all the time so so, so we're talking about 70 percent 70 percent aren't right on the way in the rest that get into demo 98 percent are buying um yeah. and are having a great experience does that follow through you talked about the long tail does that follow through in terms of churn and that kind of stuff so that the i know you said earlier bugs and that kind of stuff is one thing to sell a dream isn't there is another thing to deliver on a dream there you go. So that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing, right? We're flipping mm. the company on its head because we could see that our key key indicator. So so hey guys, listen up. So in in software land, MRR is the driving factor that keeps you blinking all day long, right? And we worked with Mark Roberge, who was the former CRO of HubSpot, who led them to IPO. Great guy. And he um, gave us a shocking aha, which was MRR is not the lead indicator of the success of the mm. business. Like take that in because this was news to us, right? And once we understood that, we we actually under uncovered that our push for MRR was obscuring multiple uh, failures or, or Mm. you know things happening now churn was one of them it was yeah. higher than we, we thought it was and so we dug in to you know what do our customers need to stick around and it was pretty simple publish 20 posts by the ai once a month right that's all and what mm. do we need to do to get them to do that and if they're not doing it why are not they why aren't they doing it right so simple um and revolutionary Right. When is when is so so my whole team's mindset right now is don't make money. Mm. What? <laughs> it's activation flow. <laughs> Give, mm. Make sure the customer is, is perceiving the value. Is the value that so this is my KPI is you have to publish twenty posts, but is that your KPI? I know it's not actually. Mm. What I need to make you feel is that you've come away from the product learning something, or um, in some cases that you can brag back to your boss that you've, you've you know, increased uh, your, the performance of the sales or marketing messaging. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, so you talked before we went on air about um, the SaaS sales system and how it's broken and yeah. how you believe it's broken. You've touched on a few bits already yeah. around focus on MRR, MRR you know, the, 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 the outbound SDR model, the cold calling piece, cold emailing, all that sort of stuff being a, a different way. Can you give me some narrative on that? Just, just what are your observations? How, how do you feel about that? And why do you say you think it's broken? Yeah, I mean, for years, so, so advice is, is free for a reason. I've certainly, I've gotten <laughs> my share yeah. of it. Right? <laughs> and every every investor or venture capitalist, ha, you know, has advice for you. <clears throat> and some of it is great, by the way. Um, but but the, the two things always have been, lead gen is, can only happen with, paid ads so you throw a bunch of money at it into a black box of mystery frankly yeah. right or you line up a bank of sdrs and it's smile and dial all day long right? right and it's a numbers game you know i've heard this a million times now i played the numbers game and it never it never worked for us like consistently and you know i i was trying to figure out you know gary gary was part of this gary, gary vaynerchuk um you know why wasn't this working for us part of it was we're doing something weird and new artificial intelligence that writes copy for you. Mm. This sentence I didn't even have last year. I couldn't describe to you what we did. You know, that's the bane of a startup is you, it's hard mm. to describe it, right? Especially when it doesn't exist, but actually there's been more 
um, in different arenas of AI copywriters coming yeah. to light, right? So people are starting to get it and it's easier for me. Um, so that that's one thing is like the, that hurdle of, you know, if I'm doing a paid ad on Facebook and I've got whatever it is, 180 characters to describe lately. I mean, I haven't even done that for you guys today. It's, yeah. it's difficult, you know? I need the time. I need the time. I need the onboarding call. I need the, 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 I need to be able to pique your curiosity, curiosity and then have a moment to explain with you and mm -hmm. to actually make sure that you are willing to listen. That's a whole other thing. You know, how do I yeah. find those customers that want to take some time with me? Um, and then also it didn't feel right to us. Like we didn't enjoy doing it because like I said, um, we didn't, we didn't like being on the other side of it. Right. Mm -hmm. We, we'd already talked about putting, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and how does that feel? And I, I thought to myself, when have I ever received a cold email that I thought was like, fuck yeah, this was good. Sorry to swear. But, you know, yeah. it's like <laughs> <Back home. laughs> almost never. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I think, too, that the industry has scienced itself to death. This is the this is the big problem. And this this is per pervasive over our whole lives. Just think about mm -hmm. it for a second. Right. Everybody just wants to figure out the boxes and check all the boxes. You know, um, Shark Tank is a great one. And they don't want to have a conversation. They don't want mm -hmm. to get to know me. Right. They want to you're a female and female entrepreneur. Check, you know, like, right. SAS check. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take a second to understand all the things we've been talking about. Now, what I've learned is that it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. And now you're missing out on me. Right. You're missing out on this on this unicorn. Right. And if you don't have fucking time to take to talk to me, then I, I also don't have the time for you. Right. Like it just, and this is an investor land, but, mm. but I'm not a science project. I'm a human. Mm. And, and this is talking the talk and walking the walk. This is lately is the same thing. Like lately's AI is designed to get you three quarters of the way there, but a human must augment it for the lights to shine. Right. And that's a tough thing for humans. To, humans are lazy. <laughs> so true. Right. Yeah, we don't want to do it. We don't want to participate. So. That's my rant. <laughs> I love it. Thank, thank you very much for your rant. Yes, <laughs> I love it. But you know what? I think some really, some really valid, uh, valid points there. And, and and for me, this is about there are lots of people throwing a lot of money at growth, um, ineffective money, inefficient money, who are focused on MRR as a key metric. And I think it's a really good point. No line of sight on margin and profitability product churn it's just throw more in the bucket and if there's a leaky bucket at the bottom you got to think about the missed opportunity but culturally it's very hard to shift that on its head isn't it and to turn it around because you've got to have everybody focused on that and of course as sales reps and sales teams we have people monetized on top 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 bring them in bring them in bring them in and you actually have to almost switch that off and turn it right down to achieve what you're talking about and that takes a very very brave team ultimately entrepreneur who's got you know the most skin in the game um and that's a, you know, it's a really difficult thing to to do so it's interesting to hear your your story about that and some of the things that you've got got ahead of you as you as you do that flip as you called it um but also some of the learnings that you you, you take into now one of my questions and I, I like to play devil's advocate a bit um and, and, I, and I do it because I think it brings the best out of my guests um I can imagine myself listening to this and thinking yeah but how scalable is it because SDRs outbound, I can load, I can layer more in, and it might be less effective, less efficient. But I know it goes again and it goes again and it goes again. You know, adds to a certain degree, albeit there's a point at which you run out of search traffic. But you can put more budget in and get more out. It may not be relative straight line, but technically you can put more in and you get more out. Does this go as far? Is it as scalable? What are the challenges around scaling it? And is it fair to question whether it can scale? Of course, it's fair, and you're absolutely right. So, like, you know, me doing one speaking engagement every day as the sole lead gen for the entire company is not scalable, mm -hmm. unless I put other people on the cover of the magazine with me, which I actually do. You know, my head of growth and, and my yeah. head of sales, my team of ones, you know, they do these as well. Yeah. Um, but it's not the same. I mean, I I was the one who's the the, the jock for you know, 20 million listeners. So I have yeah, that yeah. still. Um, but this is why we're flipping it. So product-led growth is the mm -hmm. answer to your question. Mm -hmm. And that's the um, that's the Rubik's Cube, right? Um, and, you know, what we've been thinking about this a lot, like what closes the loop for our product-led growth? And 
you know, so to give folks an example, like, you know, Facebook, which I feel like ancient talking about Facebook in general, but, you know, <laughs> you, you come back every day because there's a little red dot message that says yeah. to you, you have six alarms or whatever they are, right? So what's our version of that? And so what we're experimenting with now is that we found that people are, um, <laughs> they're concerned with some weird things. Hashtags is a huge concern of mystery, even for our, our most well-known, some, some famous marketers that you know are constantly mm. asking about hashtags. Okay? Mm. And then also number of posts, cadence is a, is a constant mm. question. How many times do I post and where? And so we are designing a system that like a like weight loss if you're going to say i want to lose five pounds okay great so we have that metric now everything we're going to do is going to be around making sure you lose those five pounds yeah right um so that's what we're betting down on is that that your kpi remember i said yours isn't the same as mine yeah um and when you're using ai to create because engagement isn't it this is the funny thing owen like mm. we thought that's what people would care about it's not <laughs> isn't it amazing <laughs> Yeah, what do they care about? Um, they care about just getting it done. It's the lazy mm. part. They just want it with, with marketing especially, and so social media, you know, applies to obviously everybody. Um, they just want it off their plate, mm. right? And and to the point of where, like, we have some customers who, and I tease them about it, they'll just let the AI run wild, and I can see their posts, and I can tell that the human hasn't taken a second to cut out the non sequitur. You know, because mm. hey, it's it's only as smart as you teach it to be. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm like, and but they don't care because <laughs> it's done. It's yeah. off. It's off the plate. Which the shocking thing here is, so so if you have QuickBooks, you know, you sit down to do QuickBooks, and you sit down to work for an hour. You got your papers out or whatever your your stuff here, and there's you know that you have to participate, right? It's like it's like a electronic toothbrush. You still have to hold the brush to your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. But people aren't prepared to do that. They they, they genuinely think that it's just going to do the job for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that, I think that's a misconception of AI also too. Like you know, uh, if if AI was a human being, it's oh. about three months old. Yeah, all yeah, AI, yeah. right? Yeah, you know. and, and I think you know the media, the media globally doesn't help with that sort of stuff. You know, robots are going to take over all our jobs and this sort of narrative, which of course makes people think it's further further ahead than it really is. Um, yeah. But I can see why that's a, an adoption issue and an impact on things like churn because people will, will then get to the point where they have to formally review something and somebody will say, hang on a second, look at this content. It's not great because it's not got that human input. So I can see why that's something that you need to battle with around engagement, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, we've doubled down on the AI to get you to 90% now mm. um, and to do some of the inline contextualizing for you, yeah. which is what we were talking about before. I mean, we learn, yeah. right? We learn and iterate right? and we, we hear yeah. you guys. Um, and so our belief is that by simplifying, I mean, what we did is we ripped the publishing pieces out yeah. of, out of it. So we're yeah. not, we're not having to deal with that madness anymore. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, the other thing too, is like, usually the AI will give you literally a hundred posts. I get this mm -hmm. video hundred posts. Now I'm like, yes, I can schedule those out for months. Right. Mm -hmm. But most people, that's me. Cause I'm crazy. Most people are like, oh God, a hundred, that's too many. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Attention to detail, time, patience, got other things to do, noisy mm -hmm. workload, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway. Uh, so it remains to be seen. We should we should talk in six months and I'll let you know if I'm still standing. Well, you know, okay, I'd, love to, <laughs> I'd love to do that. If for no other reason than I enjoy listening to you and your stories, it's it, it's fantastic to do that. And and it's been really great to hear about your 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 process and you think and I always I, I grilled you a bit on the 98 percent for a reason because that's what you came in with as a claim but actually there's a lot more that we've talked about and that that, that that I've taken from this discussion so it's been hugely valuable for me and hopefully the audience feel that, that, that the same way before we wrap up Kate who should be talking to lately so who can you help with the product um what are they likely to to to, to see and achieve and, and and if those people are out there listening to this how can they get in touch with you Thank you so much. Uh, so anybody who needs to write copy for social media, call me. We now have a product for you. You don't have to be a company. You can be an individual. And mm -hmm. the, the pricing we know is right also. Um, www.lately.ai. But if you want to connect with me personally, um, there's lots more of this <laughs> to be had. And I'm uh, Lately AI Kately on, on Twitter and most of the places. Fantastic. Good stuff. Well, Kate, thank you. Thank you ever so much for joining us. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Definitely learned a thing or two. I love that thing about the word because as well. That's going to that's gonna sit there for a minute or two, I think for sure. Um, Excellent.
and it's been the first rock and roll DJ I've had on my uh, podcast. So, <laughs> life life objective achieved. I like it. <laughs> if you're nice to me, I'll do the voice for you. Uh, go on, oh, please. Before, let's wrap up on that. Come on, I've been nice to you for ages now. Come on, give us the voice. Let's finish on the voice. Go on. You're listening to. Um, wait, what's the name of your show? Let me do it. What is it? Uh, on air. You're listening to. You're listening to on air with Owen Richards. Love it. Oh, <laughs> love it. My husband note. always says to me, he's like, why don't I get the nice voice? <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> Kate, thank you ever so much. You've been a superstar. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you.